are you doing? Bless. God bless you and welcome to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry Home Edition. Amen. We're here to bring you the word of God today and we're excited about it. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. You know why I'm excited? Why are you excited? I'm going to sing today. Oh, Lord. <laughs> She's going to sing today. Y'all. Amen. <laughs> y'all help me. <laughs> Christy, you help me with your mama now. <laughs> God bless you. All right, I'll turn it over to uh, Pastor Wendy. She actually has everything under control. And I'm just sitting here being a co-pilot. We have four cameras going on in this house, y'all. Amen. So we're we're going live everywhere. So Amen. we're excited about to get the word of God out to you. We truly had a good time last night. One Faith Fellowship. One Faith Fellowship. And then Friday, we had a great time. That was uh, date night. Date night, and we had a lot of positive response on our date night and we it was, it was truly a great moment for us so we thank god for allowing us to do that also Amen. all right pastor wendy all right praise god praise <laughs> god praise him in the morning praise him in the noonday praise god praise god Praise him when the sun goes down. I knew somebody just needed to hear that. I just felt in my spirit. I had to sing that song. I needed it today. Um, ushering in the Holy Spirit. God has been talking to me uh, concerning this word on today. And I'm just excited. And when pastor said, uh, you got a word? I said, got a word. I got a word. So I'm excited. I'm thanking God for each and every one of you that's here on our special home edition of the word on today. First From- Sunday. First Sunday, too. First Sunday. Yes, it is. It is. And uh, pastor is the pastor of Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry here in Blythewood, South Carolina. So I'm excited. So all of you who are tuning in for the first time, welcome once, welcome twice. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God that we are here today. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, I just pray that each and every one of you open your spiritual ears that you may hear what thus saith the Lord on today so that deliverance can take place in your life, so that healing can take place in your life, so that love, joy, and peace and happiness can take uh, place in your life on today. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name on today. We thank you, Lord God, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for coming today, Lord God, sitting right here in our home, Lord God, in the sanctuary of our home. We thank you and we praise you for showing up and showing yourself real to the people on today, this day and forevermore. We praise you, we magnify you, and we worship your holy name in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, we do pray and we agree. Amen. 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 And first and foremost, I want to give you the uh, topic of my uh, subject on today. It is, it's your faith that will get you through, not fear. It's your faith that will get you through, not fear. So it is faith that's going to get you through this pandemic, not fear. So just drop the fear thing and pick up the other other F, capital F-A-I-T-H. Pick up the other F and drop the other F. Let faith rule you and not your fear. Amen? Amen. And if you would turn with me to Psalms 100... And verse three. And Amen. Let me get my help, y'all. Some help to come on. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. Amen. Stop right there. God has made you, so He already knows everything about you. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. Amen. So guess what? Let Him have His way in your life. I know many times our flesh say, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do it my way or no way. But God created you. Is that what the word says? That's what it says. The God created you. So let him have his way in your life. Go ahead, Pastor. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. We are his people. He already said you belong to him. Why are we trying to run away from him? Get closer to him. This is the time that you even need to get even closer than you've never been before. I thought about something um, where I work. Uh, we stopped selling books because everything is on social uh, social media, all these uh, devices that we can use now. Um, we stopped selling books. Well, guess what? Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants a book. And I'm a book person anyway, not because I'm an author, but because I just like to have something in my hand. I don't want this little device in my hand. I want a big book, something heavy. I want to hold it in my hand. I want to flip the pages. So I thought about something this morning. I said, what if all the electronic devices shut down? Do you have a Bible in your home that you can turn to? Or is this somewhere collecting dust because you always rely on this device that you hold in your hand called a cell phone? What if all the electronic devices are shut down? Amen. Then what? You got to have this word. And guess what I realized too? When you're flipping through this Bible, there's 66 books in this Bible. 
It takes a while to find if pastor says go to Daniel, then pastor says go to Matthew, then pastor says go to Romans, then pastor says, hey, what if you don't have your device anymore, your electronic device, and you got to flip through these pages? It's going to take you a while. Start flipping through some pages. Grab your Bibles and flip through some pages, everybody. I, I like the new device that we have back in the day. We didn't have a cell phone, but now we've it's been made easy now. Thank God, because now we can communicate with you through social media and through all these other electronic devices. So I'm thanking God for all these devices that we can use and that we can get out the word of God because of the fact we have it. But I want you to not be... Um, uh, a slave to these devices. I want you to realize that this is not the only thing you need to um, communicate throughout the day. One day uh, we had a, somebody ask the kids if it was brush your teeth every day or have your phone every day for five days, which one would you rather have? And they said, have a phone instead of brush your teeth. Ah, so yes, let's, let's think about this. So let's not um, be so um, reliant on our uh, devices that we have in our hand than everyday things that we need like brushing our teeth that, that's we need our teeth our toothbrush and we need our teeth brush so if you would turn with me to daniel we're going to talk about a man named daniel and then the book of daniel i want you to turn to six uh and uh chapter six verse 14 amen i'm giving everybody a chance to get to that uh chapter we're talking to Daniel 6.14, and I'm going to read Daniel 6.14. I'm going to stop along the way because what I learned about Daniel is although he was in the lion's den, he relied on God because he knew who he belonged to. Amen. He knew who he was. He knew that God was delivering from it all. He got thrown into the lion's den because somebody didn't like him. Somebody was jealous of the job that he was given by the king. Somebody just didn't like him. And there's many people out there right now. Somebody just don't like you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If God is for you, who can be against you? Well, we can't let Uncle Willie hear that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So listen, if God is for you, forget about everybody else. God will deliver you through it all. So in the book of Daniel, I like how Daniel was uh, delivered from the lion's den. And back then, when you did a crime, uh, they didn't put you in the jail and feed you every day. And, and you know, you, you just didn't do that. They hurry up and got rid of you. So they put Daniel in the lion's den, hoping that the lions would eat him up. Well, let's read and see what happened. In Daniel 6, 14, it says, Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the son to deliver him. Now the king didn't really want to put Daniel in the lion's den. Amen. However, he was told that Daniel uh, started serving the big G-O-D. And this was the new decree that you couldn't serve your God. So Daniel, of course, three day, three times a day, he was serving God. He was getting on his knees and he was praying to God. So the uh, people that were jealous, the ones that were jealous of him, they decided to tell the king what Daniel had done. So the, the king had to put him in jail, even though, or in the lion's den, even though he didn't want to. So in 15, it says, then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, now, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. That means, king, you made the rule. You signed it with your ring. So it's a done deal. You can't get him up out of there. We know you love Daniel, but he can't get out. Now, in 16, it says, then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Sometimes we put ourselves in the lion's den. Sometimes we put ourselves in the lion's den. How's that? In our mind, in the way we think, in the things that we do. Sometimes we put our own selves in the lion's den. Amen. We live on, on past hurts. We live on past regrets. And our mind is still stuck in the past. God said, get up out of the lion's den. There's no reason why you should still be stuck in the lion's den. Get up out of there. He's delivered you and set you free. Quit going back into the lion's den. Quit allowing people to talk you into mess, doing stuff you know you're not supposed to do, being where you're not supposed to be. God said, get up out of the lion's den. Some of us uh, have addictions. Get up out of the lion's den. You're bigger than that crack. You're bigger than that drink. You're bigger than alcoholism. You're bigger than that. Get up out of the lion's den. You're delivered. You're set free. I say it is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in 17, 
I'm going to say stick, stick with uh, 16. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. The king already knew that Daniel's God was a big God and that he will be delivered and set free from the lion's den. He didn't know how. The king couldn't even sleep because he was so concerned about uh, Daniel being in the lion's den. He didn't even eat. It says the king even fasted. He couldn't even eat. He couldn't sleep. He was so concerned and worried about Daniel being thrown in the lion's den at the rule that he put forth. So all these mean people, all the people that didn't like Daniel were happy that he was in there because they just knew Daniel was going to be ate up by these lions, right? Amen. Guess what? When people don't like you, they're waiting for your demise. They're waiting for you to fail. They're <laughs> waiting for something to happen Come on now. so they can laugh at you. They can say, yes. He's finally gone. Sometimes people don't even know why they don't even like you. It's the spirit of the Lord that's upon you. The reason why people don't like you, but it's okay. Amen. Don't let them throw you in the lion's den. Don't let them convince you that you're a nobody. You are Amen. a somebody Amen. because of Christ Jesus. You are somebody. He died on the cross for us. He is the King of King and the Lord of Lords. And because of him and because of what Jesus did, we are able to have life and have it more abundantly. So quit letting people Throw you in the lion's den. Don't let them throw you in the lion's den. So in 17, it says, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the lion's den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. In 18, then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting, meaning he didn't even eat. Neither were instruments of music brought before him as he slept and went from him. In 19, it says, then the king arose very early in the morning and went haste into the lion's den. In 20, it says, and when they came to the den, he cried with a loud lamentable voice and said unto Daniel, and the king spake and said, Daniel, oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. He even knew that his God could deliver. He ran down there early in the morning, wanted to see if the lions had devoured him. And guess what? In 21, it says, then said Daniel, uh-oh, quit letting people think that when the morning comes, you're not going to rise up and get up and get out of that den. Amen. Show people that you're victorious. Show people that you're able to do abundantly above even what they can think or imagine. Let them know that you serve a mighty God. Daniel came up out that lion's den and let everybody see Everybody that wanted him to die, everybody that wanted him to get devoured, now they see how mighty God is. See, the reason why God wants to deliver you from some things and all things that's holding you back is because he wants to show how real he is in your life. But you won't let him. You keep sitting there in the den. So when the king showed up, Daniel could have just sat there and was like, okay, I'm going to stay here a little longer and see what the lion's going to do. That's what we do. We sit in that lion's den just a little bit longer. We cry and we pout. We don't want to get up out of the den. We want to sit there and complain and be sad. God said, get up out of the den. Get up out of the lion's den. Say, get up. Get out of that lion's den. Shake somebody beside you and say, get up. Get up out of that lion's den. Some people in their mind, there are many people that are depressed. There are many people that weren't depressed before this pandemic, but now they are depressed. Tell them, get up out of it. You'll be surprised how many people in my work area wait till everybody leaves out the office and they say, Wendy, can you pray for me? <laughs> sure. I surely can. God got to show up and show out. God got to show how real he is. And then after I prayed for the one person, she said, I called my sister and I told her you pray for our whole family. I said, well, praise God. Nothing Wendy did. It's all about what God is doing. Amen. It's all about what God is doing. It's nothing that I do of myself. It's all what my heavenly father is doing so that he can get the glory and he can be magnified. We got to do this thing, everybody. We got to do the right thing. This pandemic isn't supposed to wipe you out. This pandemic is supposed to cause you to bring up your faith, elevate your faith. Yes, yes, come on. Bring up your confidence. I had confidence that I could sing this song today. Oh. I had confidence. I was like, I can sing. Look, you can sing. I, I, was, I was bringing a joyful noise unto the Lord. There you go. I was just sending up a sweet smelling Savior unto the Lord. Amen. 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 But it wasn't about me. It was about pleasing my Heavenly Father. When I pray for people, it's not about me because there's nothing I can do. I, this is just flesh. And when you poke me, I'm going to bleed red. 
This is nothing Wendy is doing. It's all about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit gave me the word concerning Daniel and people being stuck in the lion's den, Daniel was free to get up out of the lion's den. And those of you who don't know the story, let's finish reading it. And in 21 of Daniel 6 and 21, it says, Then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. Daniel was still alive. He been in the lion's den all night long. All night long. And in 22, my God has sent his angel. What? We got angels? Pastor, we got angels. Everyone has their own special angel watching over them. Amen. We got angels. Imagine that. God has an assigned an angel to you. Quit wearing your angel out. Ooh, that's good. Quit wearing the angel out. The angel trying to guide you and lead you. And what you do? You keep going left and the angel keep trying to get you to go straight. You keep going right and the angel keep trying to guide you to go straight. Quit wearing that angel out. Daniel sat in the lion's den and the angel... The angel was able to deliver him out of the mouth of the lions. Some angels want them to wear them out because some people don't use them. They ain't been used enough. Angels just sitting there stagnant. Yeah. They're just bored. Yeah. They just can't do nothing. Yes. Because they just won't let them. Yes. Come well, on. well, well. Come on. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth. They, what? Shut some folks' mouth up. They've been talking about you all your life. Said you wasn't going to never be nothing. Said you couldn't do nothing. Said you was going to fail just like your daddy and your mama. And you wasn't going to never succeed. You better shut the lion's mouth. Amen. You better let your angel guide you. I know it was an angel that kept me over in Germany over the Audubon. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing on the Audubon. People was flying past me 150, awesome. miles, 150 miles an hour. I know I had an angel. <laughs> I was only doing 75. I was only doing 75. And that brings a point since we're back in the state. If every time we committed a crime, as, as far as, say, for instance, going over the speed limit, if we knew we were going to be thrown in the lion's den every time we committed a crime, how many of us wouldn't commit a crime? How many of us wouldn't lie? How many of us wouldn't steal if we knew that we were going to get thrown into a lion's den? Not to a jail cell, not to a holding cell, but in the lion's den. Rock. All around and lions get to have his way with you. How many of us would do the right thing daily? Well, think about that. Before you commit a crime, before you commit a sin, before you destroy, destroy this temple that God has blessed you Amen. with. Amen. If God said, okay, everybody that's done something wrong to the lions, then you go, we'd all be gone. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first Sunday. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus and the fact that he got up on the cross. And when he got up there, he could have got down, but he didn't because he loved us just that much. When you think about that, don't your soul just cry out and say thank you? Because I know many of us don't even pay that any attention. The fact the first Sunday or any Sunday that you um, take communion. This is to reverence our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's called our Lord and uh, Savior, Jesus Christ, for a reason. He saved us from the hands of the enemy. He saved us so that we can have this great life. I love living. Whether it's in the house every day or whether it's out enjoying the sunshine. I'd like to be on the beach right now, but I am content where I am. Amen. I am content where I am because I know God is in control. God is keeping us from something. We don't know everything. What did it say in Psalms? What did it say? He created us. Yep. Let God be God. Sit still. Be still and know that he is God. When you've done all that you can do, just be still. But stand and stand some more. Daniel stood. In 22 it says, My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Daniel didn't do anything wrong. When you know you've done the right thing, quit letting people talk in your ear, get in your ear gate, and drop off garbage and try to convince you of otherwise. When you know you've done the wrong thing. That's okay. Don't stay stuck there. Don't stay in the lion's den. Get up out of that lion's den. And say God delivers me. God sets me free. And if you know, don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. As your personal savior on today. Today is the day. Today is the day to make a new beginning in your life. Amen. What's today's date? The third. May the third, 3rd, 2020. Amen. Let this be the day that you say hey. I'm tired of wallowing in the lion's den. I need my angel to show up on my behalf. I need deliverance. I'm just going to confess today that I need God to intervene in my life and I need to become his child. I need Amen. to be a part of the kingdom because this lion's den is getting scary. You see, at first the lion's den didn't look that scary because right. they were over <laughs> to the side. 
But now the word pandemic has come along. Now the line's getting a little bit closer. Now it's looking real to you. Now it's looking real to you. So guess what? It's time to get up out of the lion's den. Daniel didn't even do anything wrong. But yet and still, they wanted to throw him in the lion's den. Quit throwing yourself in the lion's den. Sometimes folks don't even have to throw you in the lion's den. You do it yourself. You walk on in there and say, okay, shut the door, shut the gate. Let the lions have his way because then we're having a pity party. I don't deserve God to heal me and deliver me and set me free because I've been a smoker all my life and now I've got cancer. So I deserve everything that I'm getting. No, the devil is a lie. This is a new day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be glad in it. Deliverance will take place. Amen. Call unto your God, Savior, the one that delivers and sets you free. Call on him. Quit letting the enemy convince you otherwise. He wants you to think you're not able to get delivered. He wants you to think that you don't deserve God. You deserve God. He created you. The devil didn't create you. Amen. He didn't make you. You wouldn't look that good if the devil created you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm you wouldn't look that like good. God, you wouldn't look that good. You look as good as you do because God created you. Look in the mirror and say, hey, Amen. thank God for who he is. I look good. Amen. I look good. Yes, you do. It's because of God. It's nothing that you put on your face this morning. And I'm, I'm needing to relax real quick. I'm getting real poofy. It's not the relaxer that I'm getting put in my hair. It's not the jewelry that I put on. It's not the lipstick or the lip gloss we put on. It's not those eyelashes that we put on. It's not the... <laughs> quiet, Cam. It's not anything that we can put on that creates us to look better on the outside. It's what God has created on the inside. Let the inside come out. If the good man's in you, it's coming out. If the bad man's in you, it's coming out. Let him come out. Get him up out of there. And in 23, it says, then was the king exceedingly glad for him. Look, the king is excited. Our king of king and lord of lord is excited that you want to be delivered and set free. Let the king of king and lord of lord deliver you. Set you free. Do you want it? You got all this freedom now. Everybody can sit at home, stay in the bed a little longer, except for me. And you got all this freedom. What are you doing with all this freedom? Daniel's free now. The king is excited. Daniel is happy that he didn't get ate up. Daniel's angel has delivered him. The lion is sitting there with nothing in his mouth. Let me tell you something. You've got power. You've got power. You've got power. Use that power that you have. Use this tongue to speak life over yourself Amen. and over Amen. your children, over your children's children. Come on. Only you can speak life. Pastor can pray for me, but I got to believe what he's praying over me. Yes, amen. If I was a um, gloom and doom wife, pastor wouldn't look this happy. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> pastor wouldn't be too happy to be around me. He'd be like, you stay in another room. I go in another room. You got to be that positive person. People don't want to be around a negative person. Well, I'm going through. Amen. All right. I believe you're going through. Call on the God of Israel. Call on the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. And ask him, what is it he can do for you? I guarantee he's going to give you some answers. But if you want to stay in the lion's den of depression, Come on. stay there. But I encourage Amen. you today to get up out of the lion's den. Amen. If Daniel can be delivered out of actual lion's den, how much more can God do for you? He can deliver you out of that depression. He can deliver you out of your alcoholism. He can deliver you out of drugs. God is the God who delivers and sets free. But you got to believe. You got to speak that thing, believe that thing so God can do that thing. Do you Amen. want him to do come it? On. Do you believe he can do it? Are you even going to speak it so it can come to existence? You got to believe it. I can speak it all day for you. I can believe all day because I know God answers my prayer. Amen. And it's just because I believe. I have that faith. The title of this lesson is, it's your faith that will get you through, not your fear. Amen. I don't fear. And, you know, many people say, everybody's scared of something. I used to be scared of bees, bumblebees, any kind of bee, wasps, whatever you call it. I got to South Carolina. I stopped running for bees. Guess what I stay away from now? Ants. <laughs> Ants will eat you alive. Stand in an ant hill long enough. And I guarantee you'll wish you had got bitten by a bee instead. <laughs> I stay away from the ants. If a bee can fly around now. I'm like, whoop, that ain't nothing. <laughs> stay away from the ants. Watch an ant at work. Ants are busy, but they tiny, but they're busy, and they're going to get the job done. Amen. Attack that ant hill if you want to. Attack it if you want to. Ants have more sense than humans sometimes. They'll take up for each Amen. other. They'll take up for each other, and we won't. 
We'll, we'll, we'll throw the coal over him and light the fire. We'll throw him in the lion's den. But ants will take up for each other. Amen. They'll come together, an army of ants, and devour you. Yep. If I'd have stood in that ant hill long enough, boy, they would have ate my leg up. Yep. They work together. They work together. They work. That's what the Bible talks about. Observe an ant. Observe what ants do. God created the ant too. Listen, everybody, I want to encourage you on today. You know, I, I remembered to bring this in here. And you should know, have seen my husband when I brought it in. He was like, what in the world are you doing? This is a teacup. But I didn't bring in the teacup to have some tea or have some water in the teacup. This was to remind me of uh, Pastor's grandma, Grandma Campbell, an inheritance. This was to remind me of an inheritance. Listen, if you stay in the, da the lion's den long enough, like Daniel was in the actual lion's den. This is just not a story that was created just to tell you something. This was an actual person, and these were real lions, and this was a real den that he was in. What God is telling us is if you stay in the lion's den too long, your seed suffers. Amen. You can't leave an inheritance for your seed if you stay in the lion's den too long. Amen. Amen. Don't stay in the lion's den so long that your seed suffers. You got to get up out of the lion's den. When Grandma Campbell passed away and they were um, asking, you know, did anybody want this or anybody want that? And I, I stood back because I'm the daughter-in-law. So I waited till everybody got what they wanted. And they got the cute china. And, and I said, I like that one. Can I have that one? And they said, yeah, yeah. Nobody wanted it anyway. Well, do what they didn't know. I had already been to Mannheim, Germany. And what I learned in Germany that this particular uh, church hill made in England Dishware was very exquisite and very popular and very expensive. So Grandma Campbell had some expensive taste. Amen. Guess what? It was handed down to her seed. Campbell has some expensive taste. <laughs> I got her, y'all. My point is, expensive. what you do is handed down, whether you believe it or not. Jeans are something else. Jeans are something else. So whatever you do, whatever is going on in your household, guess what? It's an inheritance, whether you believe it or not. You got a crazy household. Believe it or not, it's in your kids. You got a nice, calm household. Believe it or not, it's in your kids. Not only in your kids, it's in your relationship. Amen. So ladies, you control the atmosphere in your household. What kind of atmosphere do you have in your house? Amen. What kind of atmosphere do you want? For your seed to carry on. So when they get grown, they won't drive somebody crazy and they won't get on somebody's last nerve. What type of environment are you providing for your household? Think about it. You got to do the right thing because it's your seed. It's your seed. I always talk about your seed. It's your seed that's going to either reap good or reap bad. I want my seed four generations from now. What are you saying? What am I sowing? I want my seed to be excited about life. And I want my seed to say, hmm, I wonder why I got expensive taste. Then we can say, Grandma Campbell. <laughs> Grandma Campbell. What is it that you're handing down to your seed? Oh, that's a good one. What is it that you're handing down to your seed? Is it positiveness or is it negative? Are you being a negative person all the time? Does your children only see the negativity that's in you? You got to let the joy of the Lord be your strength. The joy of the Lord should be your strength. You can't find any joy in this pandemic. How about the fact that you're still alive? How about the fact that you still have a roof over your head? Okay, the landlord said he wants his rent tomorrow. Okay, uh, your house is uh, up for sale because you couldn't pay the uh, mortgage. Guess what? God is still in control. Let your Amen. angel guide you. Amen. Get on your bended knees and say, okay, God. I'm losing my house. Okay, God, I got to move out. You must have something better for me. You got to think and speak positive. Yeah. Something gets repossessed, taken away from you. God got better. How do I know? Ask me. God knows best. If your finances aren't right, it's time to ask God how to be good stewards over your finances. If your relationships aren't right and where they should be and the way they should be, ask God. Allow your angel to go before you. Quit running ahead of your angel. Amen. Let your angel do what it is the angels do. 
It says in 22, Daniel 6 and 22, my God has sent his angel. If God sent an angel for Daniel, surely you got an angel. Surely I got an angel. Surely deliverance can take place if you just allow God to be God. Amen. I encourage you on today that allowing your faith, not fear to deliver you out of this pandemic is the very thing that's going to help you through it all. You got to let your faith overtake everything that's going on. It has to be your faith. Guess what? I don't know what tell. God is good all the time. And all the time? God is good. Once again, I want to say thank you to everybody. And if you would turn with me to Romans 8, 26 and 27, we're going to be closing soon. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Are you going to do like I do? You're going to, you're going to say we're going to close soon and you're going to go another half an hour? <laughs> no, I promise. All right. I promise. promise. I keep, promise. You're going to keep your word? I'm going to keep my word. All I'm right. going to keep my word. And this is out of the New Living. Um, what do we got? NIV? NLT. New Living Translation. Translation. New Living Translation. And in Romans 8, 26 through 27, it says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. So if you don't know, it's time to just say, Lord, have your way. Not my will, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When I didn't know what to pray in my early 20s and late 20s and early 30s, I just said, oh, God, I don't know what you're going to do. But not my will, but your will be done. I didn't know what else to pray. I didn't have no long, drawn out, elaborate prayer. I didn't know what to pray. And the word says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. That means, that means God understands what the Holy Spirit is going to say. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in you. Amen. And he, the father who knows our hearts because he created you. What did we talk about so earlier? He knows you. He created you. He knows your heart. Amen. And the father who knows our hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us. Believers, believers. Uh, what is that credit card? Uh, it has its privileges. America's Express? No, yeah, but what does it say? The commercial said, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Um, has its privileges. When you're part of it, it says it has its privileges. I got to think of it. Anybody know? All right. Somebody let me know. But anyway, when you have, when you have a certain credit card, it said it has its privileges. Oh, so, that's... Right. But what does it say? What is the I commercial? Know, sure. The Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads uh, for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. That was Romans 8, 26 through 37. New life translation. Listen, God already knows what you need. God already knows what you want. All you have to do is submit and pray and ask God what it is. That needs to be done in your life. Get up out of that lion's den, get out of your pity party. Know that God knows everything about you. All we have to do is submit. Let it go. Let it go. What is that little cartoon that sings? Let it go. Let it go. Just go ahead and let it go. Let it go. Pastor, I got to remind you of something. Last week I told you it was our eighth anniversary. It's our seventh. Amen. I was ahead of things. So we're in completion. We're in the season of completion. Amen. We're in the season of completion. This is our seventh year of ministry at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry. Seven years in ministry. We started in 2013. Amen. God, in May. In May. In May. So, amen. I'm excited about what God saw. At the end of this month, we'll be celebrating seven years at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries at 302 Pine Grove Road. If you're able to join us, come on and join us for our seven-year anniversary. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing in our life. I'm excited what God is doing in your life, but you got to be excited. I can't be excited for you, but I am excited what I know he can do. So I'm excited about what God is doing in your life and take hold of the peace and get up out of that lion's den. Get up out of there. Your faith is what's going to bring you through. When 10 years pass by, you're going to look back at 2020. You're going to be like, man, I remember when the pandemic was going on and I was able to survive it. You are a survivor. This is nothing. You haven't been in the actual lion's den. This man was in a lion's den with a lion, a couple lions. You're not in a lion's den. You're in the comfort of your own home. 
Quit having a pity party. So what? You got to sit still for a little while. I'm ready to go to a restaurant too. I'm tired of cooking. I enjoy your food. But look, I'm ready to go sit at a table and have somebody serve my dinner and just relax and just order off a menu. But guess what? Patience is a virtue. I'm going to be patient because I'm content. Amen. Be content. I love you. And if there's anyone desiring prayer, you can pop it up. Let me know what you need prayer for. Other than that, I'm just going to do a uh, corporate prayer for each and every person on the line well, and each and everybody that, that's listening. Before you do that, mm -hmm. when, when you read the scripture on earth as it is in heaven, mm -hmm. break that down. What are you talking about? Everything that I'm requesting here on earth, I know it's already done in heaven. So all I have to do is ask because God has already done it for me, but I have to believe. So what I'm asking for on earth, I need it to come down from heaven now. And what's making it come down from heaven is my praise, my worship, my faith, my humbleness. He's always going to show up on time. Amen. I, I don't sing the song. He may not come when you need it. Sure, man. Because he's going to come prayer. always on time. Amen. 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 Charmaine Phillips asked for prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. And one thing we have to realize, as she said, it's already done in, in heaven. So if you can imagine yourself being in heaven, place yourself in the realm of heaven, heaven and look at heaven's standpoint. So if you place yourself in heaven's standpoint, you will understand that you can bring heaven to the earth and enjoy what heaven is releasing in the earth. Amen. 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 I just wanted to bring that out. I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I'm ready to go, Gina. Let's go. Let's go. As soon as they, <laughs> soon as they let us out. As soon as they let us out, it's time to go to eat. Charleston. Amen. Hymans. <laughs> Amen. All right. Stay focused. Stay, Stay focused. focused. Amen. Keep the word Praise out. God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, you, Lord. Lord, lifting up Charmaine Phillips, Lord. We say healing in the name of Jesus. We say deliverance in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes. I thank you and I praise you that she's not in the lion's den, but she is free because your word says, whom the son sets free is free indeed, Lord. So I thank you and I praise you for all your many blessings you've bestowed upon her life, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that she is at peace, Lord thank God. You. Whatever situation she finds herself in, Lord, I thank you that she's already at peace, Lord God. This day and forevermore, we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. Lord, if there's anyone listening listening and watching right now and it's not saved, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that right now they will call on you and ask what must they do to be saved, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that as they read your word, that they will understand that you are the only true and wise God, that they must call on your holy name and believe that your son died and rose again just for them on the yes. third day, Lord. I thank you and I praise you as we go throughout the year 2020, Lord. Our 2020 vision is already gone forth, Lord God. All we have to do is wait on the Lord, Lord. And your word says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I thank you, Lord, that our strength is yes. renewed because of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you and praise you this day and forevermore, Lord. We thank you for your peace that surpasses our understanding. We thank you, Lord God, that you are in control of everything here on this earth. And we thank you that all we have to do is call on our angel and you will send it right here yes. to help us deliver us and to set us free, Lord. We thank you and we praise you this day and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty Jesus. name, we do pray. Amen. amen. And thank you, God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Well, we thank you, Pastor Wendy, for the wonderful word. God we thank, is good. We pray that that it touched somebody in their innermost being and, and it released anything, that it released something inside of you that, that was sleep. And now we encourage you to continue to move in the right direction. Amen. Don't fall back into the ways that you used to do. Don't don't fall back into the lion's den. Don't lock yourself in into a a, a a corner where you can't get out, where you where you are trapped and not free to move freely in the things that God has for you. Amen. So we thank you for the beautiful word. Give us the title again. Okay, the title is It's Your Faith That Will Get You Through Not Fear. It's your faith that will get you through not fear. It's your faith that will get you through not fear. So this faith is something that you don't see and don't understand, but you got to live on it to let it operate inside your life. Amen. Faith is where, what controls us, what directs us and give us an understanding of who God is in our lives. So let the faith operate in you. Let the, it, it's, it's a point in your life where you have to move beyond the faith of a mustard seed. Amen. You have That's to true. grow beyond that. 
the, the, the mustard seed faith is not always going to hold you anymore. That's a start for you. So you have to mature in this word. So at one point in your life, you have to grow up and get an understanding that now you have grown beyond a mustard seed, that you, that you're bigger than a mustard seed and that you are brighter than, than, than what you think you are. Don't hem yourself up in the lion's den. Free yourself from the shackles. Free Amen. yourself from your mind. Stop Amen. being locked up in your own mind. That's true. That's true. That's the worst place to be is locked up in your own mind. That is true. That is true. So the lion's den can't hold you if you understand that you operate right. in the faith realm. Amen. Faith realm elevates you above the murky waters. Faith mel- realm elevates you above the, the 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 natural. It moves you into the supernatural realm of what God has for you. Elevate your faith. Move beyond the faith of a mustard seed because that mustard seed grows bigger than any plant that's in the garden. Amen. So you should be bigger than, than your problems. You should be bigger than your issues. You should be bigger than the people that's, that's trying to bring you down. Bigger, 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 bigger. What the songwriters say is bigger. So it has to be bigger in your life. Amen. 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 We thank you. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise God. And we see you on next time. Let God continue to bless and direct your lives in Jesus name. Amen. Continue to be blessed. We love you guys.